time for another video. This time I think I'm going to continue with this piece. Oops. I made this on video. I think this was the curved flake. No talk. No talk curved flake. Yeah. <clears throat> I think I made this on video also. <coughs> no matter how many times I clear my throat before I start the video, I still need to clear my throat. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I went through my checklist on this video like I'm trying to do with each video. Get my tools maintained ahead of time. Switch the camera phone to airplane mode. I'll switch the phone to airplane mode. Uh, clean out the chips from this area. Clear my throat. Get all my stuff uh, as far as uh, backup material ready. Repair my glove. Make sure I got a new band aid on. <laughs> Cut myself doing pressure flaking the other night. So I hesitate to do this one because. It's thin. I got a lot to do, so I gotta hurry with this one. And when that happens, um, chances are high risk. So I'm gonna make a serrated point. So I've got I got two two attempts, and maybe I'll make a serrated point out of both. If they both work out well, I will. I'll make two serrated points. So, what's the secret to serrations? Uh, just pretend the indentations between the serrations are notches. Okay. That's it. And don't break off the serrations. How do you not break them off? Well, for one, make sure your tool tips are not fat. Make sure these tool tips are not fat. <clears throat> or just fat enough. Just perfect. Make sure everything's perfect. And if you have anxiety, take your medicine before you start. Because the anxiety will make everything not perfect. Why do I mention anxiety all the time? Because it turns out these days, anxiety is extremely prevalent in the population. And you look on the internet, especially on YouTube, at the videos that are successful, many of them are anti-anxiety videos. Why would those be so successful? Millions of views on people scratching on paper, scratching on microphones, Whispering everything. Continuous rain and wind and ocean waves. Yeah, it's for sleeping, but it's also while you're sitting there working, you have something that if you pay attention to it, it'll calm you down in theory. Now it does work. I have listened to those kinds of videos. There was one that I had on a loop for a long time that I was listening to that was uh, a cafe with jazz playing in the background and raining outside. It was just a picture of a cafe looking out the window into the street, like a coffee shop. A little coffee sitting there with a little smoke coming off or <clears throat> vapor coming off the coffee cups. Just playing jazz in the background. Uh, it didn't repeat the same song over again. It was like a 10 hour video or something. It was one of my favorites. Anyway, you wouldn't normally listen to that if anxiety wasn't a thing. Can you imagine? Anything, anyone with good editing skills can create a video like that within a very short amount of time. Of course, it takes time to have editing skills. 
But after you got those skills, in the time it takes me to make an arrowhead that would pay me maybe 30 bucks, you can make a, a cafe video, a, you know, 10 hour cafe video with just the noises and jazz and make, you know, $10,000, $20,000, just on that one video over time. Of course, not in one day, maybe over a year. There's no way I can get that much from a single arrowhead. No. Nope. It's all because of anxiety. People are looking for relief. Relief from their anxiety. How do I know this? I don't know. If you're watching this video and you don't flint nap, it, you could be watching it for the satisfaction. The feeling of being satisfied helps with anxiety. Or it just may be fun. One of those things that you consider to be fun because maybe you are very sensitive and responsive to this kind of stimulus that uh, it not only is mildly anxiety helping but you feel a more intense feeling from watching flakes being removed during a flint napping session that's extremely difficult because you wish you could do it or you can't understand how it's done I mean it's amazing. So yeah, I'm glad I am getting the views I am getting. That's for sure. I am glad I'm getting the interest in my work that I'm getting. But sometimes I say to myself, you know, why don't I do, why don't I try to capitalize on anxiety instead of developing my skill in flint napping? Yeah. Obviously, there's a need for it. Necessity is a mother of invention. And uh, no one's ever heard of the... Well, never, no one ever brought up the subject of ASMR type stuff when I was growing up. Now it's one of the most lucrative and common videos that anyone can make yep and I thought this was going to be common easy for people to make you know just pick up rocks special rocks yes but just pick up special rocks from the ground put them on sticks you find in the woods you know, arrows and knives. And it'd be easy. Yeah. Everyone can do it. It turns out, not so easy. Now what am I doing? <clears throat> what is this step? This step is thinning. I'm thinning it even more. Why? Well, it has to do with the strategy of notching. I'm going to be doing a series of notches. I told you in the beginning you could consider the serrations to be the byproduct of notches in between the serrations. What's the secret of notching? One, one, what's one of them? Besides having nerves of steel, making the preform or the biface very thin very very thin oh gosh critical hit did not work if I was making 
she really points to spec. <clears throat> that would be the hardest job in the world. Make a series of serrated points all to the same size and specification. Weight, number of serrations, <clears throat> overall dimensions. Same material or whatever. Maybe different materials. It's harder to do it spec on different materials because you don't never you never know what's gonna happen. Even more than with the same material, obviously. But you know, every, everything's got exceptions. You can have trouble with the same material. You think that's the next one's gonna be just like the one before if you got the same kind of material, but guess what? Sometimes no. Anyway, to make a serrated point or a series of serrated points to specification, as I was saying in the last video, a lot of waste. Not only in terms of material, but time. Could have been doing something else, and I just broke another one. It didn't work. This one might not work either. I can't zoom in. One of the things about video, you can't really zoom in. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I can't. To get to show you what I'm going for as far as a platform, I need a platform right there. It's my only chance to run a flake here and hope it'll spread out that way and this way. That way it'll catch a lot of these step fractures on this side of the flake and hopefully it'll pass over this lump here and maybe pop out that, although I'm not worried about that particular area, yeah. I'm worried about these because these are not going to be easy to remove from the other side or from down here anywhere, so my last shot is right here. And I really don't know what the requirements are for a perfect platform. All I know is what makes a platform good in general. And what makes a platform good in general is not a lot of lumps. Not anything as an obstacle between the, the striking area and the obstacle that you want to clear. Strike here, you want to clear the obstacle, you can't have anything in between. Usually, I mean, some people can make it work. Some guys, it doesn't matter, just blow right through. It'll work. Or they have a technique where they can just blow right through with pressure. If I try to blow right through with pressure like this, right here, really, really hard. I tried that the other day, and this, that's why this band-aid's here. I cut myself on the, on the edge. Trying to press extremely hard on a pressure flake. <clears throat> Even with leg assist pressure. I was using leg assist pressure and I gouged my finger. Anyway, you don't want to hear about that. So I use a lot of indirect percussion, not only because I like it, but because it, it was a necessity when I was first learning. I could not do what I wanted with regular techniques. And I'm going to say it over and over and over because... Most of you don't realize it. You just think I'm weird. Yeah. Using a rod behind my knee when there's so many other things I can be using. I could be using a fancy easy stick behind my knee or I could be just not using in indirect percussion. What am I doing now? I see that that platform is too rounded. Too rounded. It can't be too rounded because then it'll break the whole thing in half. It turns out if you have a platform right in the middle of your workpiece, <clears throat> that is the greatest risk of snapping half. You hit on a stout platform right in the middle. That is your greatest risk for snapping in half. Even greater than having fat ends. Stout, well ground what appears to be a perfect platform right in the middle is extremely dangerous. It's less dangerous to have a weak 
platform, believe it or not, because it'll just crush, and you won't break your piece in half. The danger is when it's really strong. And yes, it doesn't make sense, but that's part of the strange physics of flint napping. Okay. Did it do it? I don't think it did it. It tried to do it. Or I tried to do it. See, it didn't fan out. It didn't fan out in this direction. It went in the other direction. Why? I don't know. I hit straight in this way. That means it should be equally fanning out this way, equally fanning out that way. Why so much? Because it's flat. See how flat that area is? If it was a, if I had a ridge, okay, focus, come on. If I had a ridge right there, I do have a ridge, but if it was, if it was more pronounced, then yeah, I could say, yeah, it'll follow that ridge no matter what. If it was more pronounced, but it's just barely visible, barely. Okay. Why am I going through all this? Why am I trying to explain all these little things? <clears throat> because this will trip you up when you're doing your serrations. This is this is going this is not going to look good. And I'm going to try to do the damage control when I'm in there doing serrations and it's not going to work. The damage control won't work. <clears throat> uh Statistically, how do I know the statistics? I'm just going by my own statistics, and you go by your own too. You can't go by mine because you'll have a different success rate with these things. Some some guys are really good at damage control. Some guys are really bad, and everything in between. Your statistics are going to be different. So if you're really good at damage control, you would you would have already cleared that out. Or found a way to get, get either the uh, rotary tool and bzzz, buzz that down flat, grind it down flat with a rotary tool, some other stone grinding apparatus. And oh yes, there's a bunch of lapidary tools out there. You can do all kinds of stuff. You just bzzz, grind that smooth so the next series of flakes just pass right over like nothing because it's not there anymore. I've, I've tried rotary tools, I've tried grinding wheels, I've tried different things on the surface of these. And uh, if you don't do it just right, there's going to be a little spot of tool marks still on the surface that you didn't get to with any flakes. And now you don't have any anywhere else you can shoot flakes from to get that little grinding off. And you go, man, all that time spent. on the point and I got it ground down perfect to be a perfect preform and I still couldn't get rid of the grinding marks and it'll drive you insane well it did me so I just do the flit napping it doesn't take much time as much for me anyway to just do the flit napping damage control it takes me longer if I had to explain it, but that's what the video is for, for explaining things. Okay. And I probably will not rewind to watch this video again because it's kind of cringy. <laughs> All right, here we go. I'm just going to try to blow through it. Oh, see it. There's a little metal deposit. <clears throat> I'm going to go. I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm going to really emphasize this. See that deposit of steel right there? That means I hit it extremely hard. And it's just a little teeny arrowhead. 
At, at that site where I deposited the steel, there could be an incipient crack now. It'll mess up strikes anywhere near that area. So either I gotta move my striking area <clears throat> from this spot where I just hit to here or to here. Because if I hit again, I'm taking a risk. It ups the risk. Why am I going over this? Because this part of thinning. Now the flake over grind guys <coughs> who are experts at thinning, they overcome this by grinding. So and and doing the shaving or scrunching or whatever they call it on the edge. They, sh sh they shear the edge off. They can shear that little area that may be cracked and then regrind and all that kind of stuff and then do another flake attempt. But I don't think it was done that way in the past. It's probably a better way to do it, but I don't think it was done that way in the past. I do have a uh, concern in the back of my head that I really I do want to learn how it was done in the past. So I don't do that way. Let's see if it did it. Nope, but I might be able to get my tool in there and push that. Try to pick it out. Let's try one more time. I'm going to send in another flake. See if I can create a stack. Or just blow it away. All right, see how I create... A stack is just a series of step fractures. All right, now I can get my spatula tool in there. All right, I'm taking a risk. <clears throat> see if this works. See, now I can get my spatula tool in there and try to pop that out more easily than I could before because now the step fracture is taller. Okay. Let's see. That's the theory. It, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And the edge of your spatula tool needs to be sharp. Sharp. Not as sharp as a knife or a cutting tool. Just narrow. Let's see. It's got to be narrower. It's got to be narrower than the height of that step fracture. Okay? Because you got to be able to push against the step fracture uh, well. You need to push well against it. Can't be like partially pushing against it or some of the tooltip hanging off the. or. I don't know what past the uh, past the uh, top of the step fracture. You want to seat it in there well. Okay. Now this is this is where I cut myself a lot of times. So just got to be patient. I may be jiggling around here trying to figure out the best position so I don't cut myself because this my knuckle just goes right up against that. All right. Did it do it? Oh gosh. Let's see. Try to put it back. Try to put it back. All right, let's zoom in. Now, I think it did it, right? It. Here, let's see. Good enough, right? It did it. Yay, it did it. All right, so let's look and see. If I hadn't taken that strike right there to create that stack which is one step fracture above the other or a series of what they call steps right it's a stack a series of steps is a stack if I hadn't have done that I probably wouldn't have gotten the tool in there well enough and also don't forget I sharpened up the tip so it would seat well and then push that off carefully so that's good enough there's still a little remnant in there but remnants are no big deal you just say oh well if you don't say oh well to those remnants you will drive yourself insane 
Okay, now this is really, this is an issue here where it's, a, it's very thin. An issue means it, it can break right there. I got to thin down this area. I got to thin down this area to be consistent. Because once I start doing the serrations, if it's fat in one area, I'm going to have to push really hard to get those notches between the serrations accomplished and they could stall. And then I'll be pushing really, really hard to get through that stall and then snap right across. So, what I got to do is make it as, as regular as possible. Did they do that back in the day? Yes, on some of them they did. On most of them they did not. Why am I going to do it? It covers all bases for the video, for all techniques. Some guys are really persnickety. See, I, uh, they, want, they insist that they watch videos that have their persnickety techniques. Other people that don't care just like to see it for the, the sake of seeing it. And me, I'm doing it because it increases the chance of me not breaking it on video. How's that? And uh, I'm going to do a no-talk serrations video too. But for now, I don't think I went into serrations in depth in the past. I, don't, I, tried, I tried looking for a few minutes. I do have serrations videos. For those of you who don't know, just go to my about. And I think it shows you how many views I have and how many videos I have. And yes, it's over a thousand videos. In fact, I number all my videos. I'm up to 1,200 and some, 1,280. That's how many videos I got. Yeah. You want to really see this cringy stuff. Watch some of my early stuff. You want to, want to see even more cringy stuff. Watch some of my uh, Flint Yap videos. Yap, Y-A-P. Flint Yap videos. Now that's good cringe right there if you want some. Oh yeah. Thought I'd post some of those too. Just to round them out. Just so I can be... Rounded out in my... Or diversified in my video presentations. Here you go. I got a... I got a a variety and a diverse selection of videos. I've got only natural tool videos on my Allergic Hobbit channel. I looked at my channel last night and I hadn't looked at it in over a year. No, not over a year. In almost a year I hadn't looked at my Allergic Hobbit channel. I almost have a thousand subscribers on that channel and I never check it. And it's been a year or more since I posted on it. I'm thinking to myself, you know what? I could torture you guys by monetizing that channel too. <laughs> Only need like 50 more subscribers on that one. Yeah. But if you want to see only natural tool videos, unpolluted for the most part, just go to my Allergic Hobbit channel. I don't know how many videos I got there, but I don't know, 20 or some odd, I don't know. I'm terrible. I don't even know how many videos I got. I think I numbered those too. I just couldn't remember. I can't remember what the number was. Final number. I'm not going to post any more on that channel, I don't think. I was thinking of actually downloading all those videos and reposting them on this channel. But I've got almost a thousand subscribers on that other channel, so I'm thinking, you know, I might start posting on that one just to get the subscriber count up and give me the option of whether I want to moder uh, monetize it or not. I don't know if I will. It's just an option. I never really wanted to monetize my channels because I hate seeing ads. I pay for YouTube Red or whatever it's called just so I won't see ads. But since YouTube insists on putting ads on my videos 
anyway, even though I don't monetize the channel, I say, hey, you're not going to get all that money yourselves. It's my videos. Taking, taking all that ad revenue for yourself, YouTube. So I get monetized. All right, let's see. We're at, at the end of this segment. Can I do this with natural tools? Yes. Actually, when you get to the small size with good material, sometimes uh, it it'll it'll actually thin down the tip and other areas even better than with a steel tool. When when you get to this size, larger size, I still had trouble with the thinning with the larger thicker pieces with natural tools it just eats up the antler and eats up everything but with these smaller ones I can probably do some more natural tool videos on my other channel with these smaller ones all right anyway we'll go on to the next segment